In this video, we're looking at how to connect MindStudio with make.com. We recently released an integration with Zapier and that's an easier to use integration because it's directly looped in in your Zapier workflows. Here in make.com, you will need to use HTTP requests, but the good thing is that this is very flexible and can be used in any time and other platforms as well. Before we jump in, this is what the workflow looks like. We have a watch new rows in a Google Sheet, we have an HTTP request with the content type and authorization set and with a JSON body. Then we're loading the response. This is running the workflow. This is loading the response. And then we're passing in the response to a Google Sheet column. In Google Sheet, this looks like this. We have an entry column, a response column, tokens in prompt, tokens in response, total tokens, and the cost for this interaction. So you can see here we asked to describe a microphone. Here's the response to describe a microphone. And then we have the token calculation with the cost. We're going to build this together, not every single component because it's going to take a bit of time, but we're going over all the basics so you can build it on your own Make account. All of the Make features you see here are free and you can use them on a free account. Now, the first thing you need to set this up is a Google Drive account and a Google Sheet sheet. So let's go ahead and create a new Google Sheet. Let's call this YouTube demo. We are not going to create the MyStudio application in this instance, but I will show you what it looks like. This is the MyStudio application. It's called MakeBot. It has a start point, a send message, and a chat terminator. The send message block simply says human sent, and this is the variable, respond to them. If you want to learn more about how to initialize variables from an API call, you can watch our Zapier tutorial. We will go in depth into everything you need to do there. As a short reminder, this is just dollar sign, launch variables, arrow to the right, entry, where entry is the actual variable we're passing in. So entry will contain the text from the user. In the debugger, you can see what that looks like. Here we say human sent describe a hot meal. And it's the same interaction we've seen before here. We have describe a hot meal, the description, the tokens, and the cost. So in this case, launch variables, arrow to the right entry becomes describe a hot meal, which is what the user typed in in the Google Sheet. Now let's go back to the main flow and you don't really need the chat terminator, but we're gonna keep it there. There's nothing else going on here. You can obviously make this much more complicated and much more useful for your workflow. But what I want to showcase here is that you can do an HTTP request call in make.com and ATA and other platforms like that if you don't like Zapier or if you're not currently using Zapier in your existing workflows. Okay, now let's head to make.com and create a new scenario. To create a new scenario, go back in Scenarios. You can only have two active scenarios at a time in Make. So we are going to delete this one and we're going to create a new scenario. The first step of your new scenario is to connect to your Google Sheet. Click on the plus and search for Sheet. Here's Google Sheet. And let's say Watch New Rows. Watch New Rows will trigger when a new row is added. And that is when you click the enter button on your keyboard and actually create a new row in your Google Sheet. So click on watch new rows and search for the spreadsheet ID here. In our example, we called it YouTube demo. Now select the sheet name, sheet one, and the table should contain headers. It doesn't right now, so let's add them in. The first header should be entry. The second should be response. We can also do the prompt part, although that's a bit more complicated. So let's do it. Uh, we have prompt, we have response, we have total tokens, and then we need the formula. The formula needs to be calculated depending on the model you're using. So we're not going to do it in this example here because you might be using any model in the MindStudio platform, but you can simply take the prompt and the response, multiply it by the cost for the prompt unit and response unit of your model, and then output the formula response here. Now let's go back to make.com and the Google Sheet is ready. So we can click on OK, that's all. We can save, it's very important to save very frequently in make.com. There's no auto saving function. Then click on add another module. And here is where we're actually calling the MindStudio application API. Click on HTTP and make a request. We don't need any of the other authentication methods because the authentication method is in the header. I will fill this up and go slowly so we can look at it together. But remember that all of this is also in our MindStudio API documentation. And you can use any API to convert our documentation examples to another coding language or to an HTTP request. The URL for the run workflow request, what will actually trigger the workflow and initialize the variable in the workflow to get a response, uses this URL here. 
api.uai.ai slash developer slash v1 slash apps slash run. The method has to be post. We're asking to do something, not to retrieve something from this URL. Then we need two headers. One is content type, and the value is application JSON, is defining the content type. And then we need the authorization, where we are passing in the API of the current app. We are passing it in with bearer as the first word, and then the API key. You can find the API key going inside the Explorer, clicking on the app name, and under API access, you have API key and app ID, which we will need shortly. Then select body type row and content type application JSON. In the request content, we need this body here. We have open curly brackets, app ID, and the ID of your application, variables, and we initialize one variable. In this example, this is actually wrong. We need to initialize entry, not user text, but I wanted to show you how it looks like. And then we have workflow running the main dot flow. And we close the curly brackets. So there are two arguments here. One is the app ID and workflow, and the other is an object inside, which is the variables. If you're not familiar with this, don't worry. We will have a copy pastable section below. But just in case, this is just initializing the right application. We're calling the right application with this API key. We are initializing the variables. So we're passing in the value from entry to the workflow. And we are initializing the right workflow, main.flow. We can call any workflow in the application. The app ID, again, is inside the same screen in the API access. And in app ID, you can find the app ID. So now let's change this to entry because that's the actual name of the variable in our MindStudio workflow. And we're initializing it with entry A. So as you can see, entry A is coming from the first part of the scenario, and you can select it here from the list, entry. The last step is to parse the response. So click on parse response, yes. Click on OK, and add another module. The second module is another HTTP request model, which loads the response from the first HTTP request module. So click on HTTP and make a request. The URL in this instance is a bit different. It's still a post request, but it is slash developer slash v1 slash apps slash load thread. And what this does is exactly that, load the thread. So click on post, and then the two headers are exactly the same as before. Content type application JSON, authorization bearer API key. Then add the body type, row, and the content type application JSON. And this will lose the app ID plus the thread ID, which we still don't have at this point in time. Click on parse response, yes. We actually need to change the app ID and the API key because I copied it from another example. So let's do it together. Copy the API key and replace it in the bearer section here and in the bearer section here, the authorization section. And then we click on app ID and copy it in the app ID JSON here and here. To get the thread ID, which is currently empty, we need to run this request. To do that, you can right click on this module and click on run this module only. You will need to send a demo entry for the entry point because this is required to run the workflow. Let's say the entry is describe Italy. Click on OK, and this will run the module. Now the module is returning this response. In the response, you will be able to see the thread ID. This is what we need to load in the load response HTTP request. So click on here, remove this thread ID, and you can add the right thread ID coming from HTTP2 make a request. Click on OK and save the workflow. The last step is to get the response from this load request, which is the actual response from the MindStudio application, into the same row in Google Sheet and update the row populating the second column. To do that, you need another module that calls Google Sheet. And the action is update a row. Then select the same spreadsheet ID, which is YouTube demo. The sheet name is sheet one, and the row number is something you can find in the first action. So row number from the first Google Sheet watching your rows. Then populate the response, which is the response from the chatbot. Now, this is the most important part and one that's quite confusing if you've never used Make before. The response of the application from MindStudio is in an array. It's an array of different chats. What you need to pass in Google Sheet is a specific portion, a specific part of this array. 
so a number, the interaction number in the array. Let's see how to do that. Click on response B and go into the HTTP 4. That's where we are getting the response from the load thread request. Before you can see the actual data in, you need to do the same thing as before, where you run this module only. So run this module and you can find the example thread ID in the data before. So let's copy this thread ID and paste it in. Click on OK, run this module, and now you will see that the data is successful and the thread contains the response from the application. The Google Sheet module is still not showing data in, so what we can do in this case is just delete this module, save the workflow, and refresh the page. That can sometimes happen, and refreshing usually fixes it. So let's go back here, click again on Google Sheet, update a row, and let's do the same thing as before. And in response, you will now see thread contains a lot of different stuff. What we need from HTTP4 make a request is inside of thread, posts, and chat message. So this is the hierarchy under thread, under post, under chat message. And the message is in content. So this is the response from the Mind Studio application. In this case, the model we're using is Clot3IQ. So this is the response from Clot3IQ. Click on content and you will see something like that. Data, which is the overarching value, dot thread, dot post, then chat message dot content. So inside of data thread post, we're looking for chat message content. However, we are not looking for the entire chat message content because there are multiple chat interactions in this thread. There is the prompt and there is the response. Not only that, there is the system prompt, then the user prompt, and then the prompt plus response, which is the last interaction. To cut this short, it means that this number here cannot be one because the first interaction is not the right one. We are looking for the final response from the main studio application, which is not the system prompt, it's not the user prompt, it's the final response from the main studio application. If you've done it exactly like I did here, then the number is three. This can change depending on your main studio workflow. Finally, we need to populate the prompt and response so that we can calculate the total token usage. To find the tokens used in the prompt, you need to do exactly the same thing. It's inside data, thread, chat message, and then tokens used. So instead of chat message content, we're going into chat message tokens used. This is the prompt and the prompt is in two because the response is in three. So we're loading the tokens used in the second interaction. The last one is tokens used in three because that's the final interaction and the total tokens usage is prompt plus response. So this will be the tokens used in the response. Again, chat message, tokens used, this time the number is three. That's all, we're not going to calculate the total tokens here, we're going to do it in the Google Sheet. So this can be a very simple Google Sheet formula, which is prompt plus response. And we can drag it down to copy it for other rows. At this point, you can click on OK, and this should be ready to go. Sometimes you might need to add a pause block here, which in make.com is called sleep. The workflow can sleep for a certain number of seconds or even minutes. That's what you should do if you find any sort of errors when you're loading the thread. But let's try to interact with it and see if everything is working fine. To do that, to do that we need to add an actual Google Sheet row, for example, describe Italy again, and click on Enter. This is now a new row. The workflow will not trigger because it's not scheduled. So we need to click manually on run once. It will find one row, trigger the run workflow, go into the load thread, and finally update the row in Google Sheet. Let's see if everything went right. Here we see that the operation two is successful. We are running it with status code 200, which means successful, and we're passing in the thread ID. Then the load thread seems to also be successful where we're getting the status code 200 and the data includes the thread, which then contains the chat messages. Finally, we are updating the Google Sheet row and it looks like it's correct as well. So let's go back to the Google Sheet and we can see the actual response. We actually see it for this empty row too because I clicked on that before exiting, but we see it for the first one too. So we have Describe Italy. This is a brief overview of Italy. This is the prompt tokens, response tokens, and total tokens. You can check if this is correct in your make bot. I can see in the debugger that when we asked to describe Italy, we consumed 439 tokens, which is indeed the correct number here as well.
We can try it one more time with two new rows, for example, describe Spain and describe USA, and see what happens. Let's go back to make.com, trigger it once, and let's actually stay in the Google Sheet to see it in real time. Great, this seems to be working fine. This is now already. You can add a cost column by calculating with the formula and the pricing sheet in Mind Studio, and you can even schedule the actual workflow so it runs in real time. With the free version of Make.com, this will run every 15 minutes, so it's not exactly real time. If you need a faster iteration, you need to buy the pro version of Make.com. Again, you can do this in any application that allows you to post a request through HTTP. This includes NA10, Microsoft Power Automate, and probably even Public. We're hopefully going to add new integrations like the Zapier integration very soon in other platforms as well. But in the meantime, if you need to run our API through a platform that simplifies automations like make.com, this is how you can do it right now with the current functionalities. Hope this helps and happy building.